Okay, we're back in R. I've saved the script, Smalt Reg, onto the desktop. Please save yours and also please comment in yours. I've not done that um, for a bit of speed, uh, but you should be putting comments in with a hash describing what you're doing. Okay, that's my cat meowing. Sorry, she might do it a bit. Okay, so ne next thing we want to do is fit the model. That's what we can do. So let's do that. We'll call it M1 and we put in the response variable, body fat, a tilde, the squiggle, and the two explanatory variables separated by a plus. And then we give it the data set those explanatory, uh, explanatory variables are in. So just going over that again, it's the same as we do for a straightforward um, bivariate regression, just one continuous explanatory variable, say weight, but we can put in, in another explanatory variable here, abdomen, separated by a plus. So we've got those two together. And, that's, and so the equation that's going to be fit when we do this is the intercept and then the slope for weight and the slope for abdomen. That's how it translates um, into an equation that we're fitting. Super. So let's run that. Um, just a, just a, a, a note that the order that we put these in, weight first and abdomen second, is irrelevant here. It doesn't make any difference. Sometimes that does it does make a difference, but in this case with multiple regression, it doesn't make a difference. So we ran that here, and no news is good news. We don't get any, any problems. The next thing we'll do is get the diagnostic plots to check the residuals. So auto plot M1. Auto plot M1. And we get um, in a second. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe we didn't run GG Fortify. Let's see. Yes, I think that was the problem. Okay, here are the diagnostic plots. We get these four diagnostic plots. Here's the QQ. There's some deviation from it at the ends, but it's not too too bad. That's looking okay. Here is the, the, the residuals against the fitted values. We're hoping that there's no relationship here, there's no pattern. Um, the blue line's pulled down a little bit at the end by this particular data point. Um, but generally speaking, this looks like someone's fired a shotgun and it's just a shotgun blast here. Same with this one down here. Uh, we're hoping there's no pattern here. This is the scale location um, plot. Um, if you don't know what that is yet, then it will be described in detail. And then this graph, we see that there's this data point out here, way out here, 39, is a bit, a bit unusual. So everything looks fine, apart from potentially we've got one data point that's kind of a bit of an outlier. We're going to leave that data point in for now, um, but we might want to think about removing it later. We actually, it's, it's, the, it's the one we saw when we plotted the histograms. So um, at the end of this walkthrough, we might look to see if that data point actually has much um, importance. Okay, so we're happy with the model. We're happy that it conforms to the assumptions of a linear model. Um, so now let's have a look at, um, at what the model is. Look at the coefficients and some other things. We do that with summary, um, the summary command. Make this a bit bigger. I'll walk through the various parts of what we get when we do summary of this linear model. Um, first of all, we get uh, R tells us what we what we did. That's here. Thank you very much. Just to make sure that we're aware that what comes below is for this particular model. Uh, we get some information about the residuals. This can be useful for checking assumptions. We've already checked the assumptions, so um, we can ignore this right now. And then we get the coefficients table. Here it is. Each row is one of the coefficients or parameters that's been estimated. So we get the intercept, the weight, that's the slope for the weight variable, and the slope for the abdomen variable. Here is the slope for the weight variable, the slope for the abdomen variable. Um, that's um, quite odd, it seems, that weight actually has a negative relationship with body fat. Yet when we looked 
at the relationships, the bivariate relationships, just the pairwise relationships, we saw a very strong positive relationship. And so that's a bit curious and quite interesting. The abdomen has a strong positive relationship. We can see that um, here's, the, here's the intercept, minus 45. This is the value of body fat that would be given by having zero weight and zero abdomen. So it's completely irrelevant. We're not actually interested in it at all here. For the weight estimate, it's minus 0.14. And the standard error is um, small relative to that. So this is about 0.15. This is about 0.02, which is... Um, I guess that is about a seventh or, or approximately a seventh of the magnitude of the standard error is a seventh of the magnitude of the of the estimate, which is quite small. And that's why we're getting this um, quite significant um, result here. Abdomen, also the standard error is quite small relative to the estimate. And again, that's why we get this very significant relationship. So we can conclude that there's a statistically significant relationship between weight and body fat and also abdomen and body fat. But we've got this quite unusual result of a negative relationship between weight and body fat, given that we, when, we, when we looked at the bivariate relationships, it was um, positive. We'll look at that a little, bit, a little bit more when we interpret the model a bit more, a bit more and, and make a graph. Let's just continue through here. Residual standard error, I don't often look at that. Um, but here we see, really important, 249 degrees of freedom for error. The residual degrees of freedom is 249. That is exactly what we expected. It's 252 minus 3. Perfect. Next line, uh, two versions of the R squared. Both of them about the same, about 0.72 or 72% of the variation in body fat is explained by... Um, weight and abdomen. So great. That's quite a lot of variation and gives us some confidence and gives promise that weight and abdomen can be used as good predictors of body fat. We're not going to look at the F statistic line of this summary table. Perfect. So um, the only kind of odd thing here, everything's everything's great, it looks great. Um, the only odd thing is that weight is coming out as negative. But as I said, we'll look at that in a second when we further interpret the model. Before we do that, um, there's another way of interpreting the coefficients of this model, and that's to look at their confidence intervals. We do that with confint and the model. So here is a table of confidence intervals. 95% confidence intervals um, for the intercept, the weight, and the abdomen. And the key thing here is that the weight and abdomen vari vari uh, coefficient sorry, are not overlapping zero. Their confidence intervals don't include zero. And that means, again, that they're at least statistically important. If these confidence intervals overlapped zero, it would say that a zero slope, i.e. a zero relationship between them, is quite plausible given the data. Uh, so that's another way to look at these um, estimates statistically. Perfect. Um, we'll take a break. The next step is to visualize the results of the model.